Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris Mackey again and this is your fourth official uh, Ladybug Comfort Tools tutorial. Uh, and in this one, so if you guys have gotten through the last three very long ones, you guys now have a base of, of fundamental knowledge about comfort uh, that is going to be really useful and allow you to really understand the things that we're going to do uh, in the future that involve uh, uh, sort of specific design problems. But before we do that, this is just going to be a brief video because there is there's one other sort of uh, comfort sort of fundamental that I, I, I feel I, I needed to include in this series, uh, which was specifically another way of accounting for outdoor comfort. Um, that is that is not really widely used, but I could see it as potentially important for uh, for certain applications, uh, and so I want to include it. So the thing is, you guys may remember that I, I so I showed you the outdoor comfort calculator, this universal thermal climate index calculator, and and told you that this is the way that you should calculate outdoor comfort. Um, and, and while that's true, the, I, I also mentioned that the reality is that there have been over a hundred different uh, outdoor comfort metrics that have been come up with, that people have come up with in the last uh, last you know several decades. Um, and, uh, and even though like this is what a lot of scientists would agree is, is probably the best for, for most of your outdoor comfort applications, there are some other ones where maybe you know specific things like um, like someone is, is running or, or, is, uh, or is playing sports or something uh, and has a specific metabolic rate that isn't that you as, as we said before isn't accounted for in this because there's no input for metabolic rate or, or clothing level. Um, and so the thing is is that I, I want to devote this tutorial to talking about standard effective temperature uh, which is essentially what resulted from the application of the indoor predicted mean vote climate chamber model to the outdoors and this and the use of this past peer review and it is it is considered a sort of valid way of evaluating outdoor comfort um, although I would suggest you know first doing a simulation with 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 this before before moving on to that so for now I'm, I'm gonna I'm just gonna delete this um, this outdoor component and pull down our predicted mean vote component and so I'm essentially you'll, you'll know in the indoor video that I didn't I didn't hook up outdoor uh, data to this because that's not usually how this 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 comfort model is used but as I've just said it is possible to use it that way so you'll see that I can I, and so I've sort of skipped a few steps to make things fast I have pulled down a weather file for New York City um, and just imported it here you guys can look in the previous videos to see how that happens um, but essentially now so we have dry bulb temperature for every hour of the year and you'll see if I plug this EPW this this weather outdoor weather data into our uh, component it transforms um, because yeah, I mean we're, we're using it for a different case than than usual and you'll see we get this little balloon that says that it's okay it's an indoor comfort model you're not really supposed to use it to evaluate outdoor comfort too too often um, but but you know that and that you should use the universal thermal climate index component first but but that I mean it's okay so that if you do if you've done that and you're just now looking for more detailed understandings of comfort in the outdoors you can do that um, and uh, and so so that's what we're going to do this time. So we've we've hooked up an outdoor dry bulb temperature, and we can now also hook up outdoor relative humidity. So these are values for every hour of the year. Um, and oh oh, and also one other important thing I forgot to talk about when this component transforms. So the thing is, in in the peer, the studies that passed peer review, it was it was generally agreed upon that the predicted mean vote values and the percentage of people dissatisfied didn't really make sense. Uh, for an outdoor environment because there's a lot more factors at play. But what does, what this did pass peer review was this sort of notion of out, outdoor standard effective temperature. Um, and, and, that, uh, and that, which is essentially the same thing as, as indoor standard effective temperature and, and is the, the temperature that it feels like outside. Um, and so that is still used to evaluate outdoor comfort um, in, in certain circumstances. And so the thing is now, now the value of this that we get, that we didn't necessarily get with the UTCI calculator, uh, was that we can do things like plugging in a metabolic rate. So I mean, so we can, we can do things like, so I mentioned in a previous video that, uh, that I will oftentimes jog in the middle of winter in nothing but shorts and a t-shirt and still feel relatively comfortable. Um, and um, and so uh, so situations like these can be evaluated with this method. So I'm actually after pulling down this activities list, I'm going to click on the arrow here and select uh, select a mildly you know walking at four miles per hour, so almost almost jogging. Um, and I'm going to hook that up to the metabolic rate, and we're going to sort of see what the comfort is like if if uh, if this is what I'm doing uh, for for most of. Uh, 
uh, you know, for, or I guess I'm looking at what times of the year are good for me to jog when I, when I would like jogging at this metabolic rate. Um, and so, so the thing is, I'm, I'm going to leave mean radiant temperature blank, which you'll assume it's the same as the dry bulb temperature. And the thing is, okay, now wind speed. Wind speed is an interesting thing because you need the wind speed where the occupant is sitting. If you guys remember from the UTCI calculator, it said wind speed at 10 meters. So essentially what this means, it's, it's the meteorological wind speed that you plug in for a universal thermal climate index, which is the wind speed 10 meters off the ground. Um, but that's different than, uh, than wind speed that, that you know, is close to the ground that, that people actually feel. And you need, that, you need that specific wind speed in order to use outset. And so for this, I've created, I'm actually, well, I'm going to show you something quickly that just shows you how, how what actually happens uh, when, you, when, you, uh, when you look at wind speed, well, how, how it varies from 10 meters off the ground down to the ground. And so, and really, you should do a CFD study if you really, if you have a complex urban environment and you want to, you want to, um, you know, understand the wind speed. But, uh, but this is a simplified model that generally looks at terrain. Um, and you see what we need to plug in, we need to plug in the wind speed from here. Uh, from our, our EPW file, uh, we can plug in our wind direction, and then we have to plug in a terrain type. And you see there are values from, from 0 to 3, so 3 being a, uh, water and 0 being a, a dense city or forest maybe. Uh, and then so maybe we'll do 1, which is kind of like mildly urban, suburban. Uh, Right. Wait a minute. Let me double check that. Um, so uh, yes, one is suburbs. Okay. All right. And then so all we have to do is is uh, well actually wait a minute that should have already run um, because the component is fast like that and you should see. Okay. Here we go. We get a wind profile curve and this this kind of gives you a sense. It shows you that okay very close to the ground like a meter off the ground the wind is not that intense. But you go up to 10 meters and it's much faster. And 20 meters, it's even faster. And you know, you can do this all the way up to like you know, pretty pretty tall heights with this component. So you can set the uh, what is it? Wind uh, uh, wind profile height. And yeah, and you can you can generate this thing for, for very very tall heights. If you if you know if you want to evaluate people up on a tall balcony of a building or something, this might be helpful for that. Um, but so essentially, so we need this ground wind speed, essentially, if we want to use this to evaluate outdoor comfort. And for that, I mean, this was for visualization purposes, but I made another component that just easily calculates this for every hour of the year, which you can just drag and drop right down onto here. It's, it's called the Ladybug Wind Speed Calculator. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and then so we can take the wind speed at 10 meters, uh, the wind direction again, and then, uh, and then our terrain type. And again, we'll do one for suburban. Um, oh, and by the way, maybe it's useful to say, so as you vary this, you know, so if we go from suburban to urban, you'll see that the, that the wind profile gets, gets thinner, that the wind speed is not as, as strong because wind or trees can block it uh, and make it less intense. So, so we'll do terrain type 1 for now, but that's just so you get a sense of that. Um, and so we'll hook up terrain type 1 for here, and then, boom, it has calculated wind speed at that height of, well, our default height, you can put in any height here, essentially, but the default is 1 meters because it, it has a sense that we want to do outdoor comfort analysis at ground level. And we have wind speed for at the ground level for every hour of the year. And then this, this wind speed at the height, which, I mean, maybe I'll just pull up a panel so you guys understand what's here. It's got a header on it and everything. But yeah, but it's, it's wind speed that's much lower, that's down here as opposed to up here. Um, and so we can take that wind speed at height and plug that into our uh, our standard outdoor standard effective temperature calculator. And I'm just going to do one other thing before you run this because the, the, the increased wind speed can make this thing run a little longer sometimes. Uh, so, so I'm just going to run it for the, for the month of January. So we'll look at the times in January where I might be able to jog with this speed. Um, and so to do that, you know, just pull down an analysis period component. And then really all we should have to do is actually set this month just to a 1. Uh, so pulling up a panel there with one in it, and then you'll see here there's an analysis period 111 to 131.24. So that's just for the month of January. And okay, and then we're ready to essentially hook this up to the analysis period, so that we're going to only run it for January. And lastly, uh, we're going to set this to droop. And uh, and so this this calculation it, sh it shouldn't take terribly long. It's usually I mean uh, you know just for one month maybe it's not more than than 30 seconds. Uh, but I'm going to fast forward anyway, so you guys don't get bored. Okay, and the calculation finished, and you can see now we get out of this component um, outdoor standard effective temperature for each hour of January. 
Uh, and you can see it's got a nice header on it and everything uh, ready to go. And then you also get things like comfortable or not, just like rough things that would, would sort of help you help you out with this. Um, but yeah, but basically now we can take this and we'll say plot it on our 3D chart that we like. Actually, instead of dragging and dropping a new component, I think I already, oh, no, I do not already have something with my favorite preferences. But, um, but all right, so let's just set that up very quickly. I like to do 0.25 for my X scale. And I like to do zero for a Z scale. And uh, and yeah, well, let's just let's just hook up straight up hook up uh, our our outdoor standard effective temperature to our 3D chart. And then uh, and then let's see, it's kind of confusing in in parallel view here. And because let's see, I'll turn the preview off on our uh, wind profile visualizer so it doesn't interfere and look at it from the top and okay so this is just january and you can see okay wow there's actually when i'm when i'm jogging actually there are i can get temperatures that feel like things that are pretty high despite the fact that it's january in new york um and so you can see there are probably some you know i don't know maybe comfortable areas are kind of around this yellow so there are definitely some good times in january where i could be running at four miles per hour continuously and still and still actually be relatively happy and comfortable um, so you guys get a sense of, of standard effective temperature, outdoor standard effective temperature, um, and, uh, and you know that you can then use this for, for very specific studies where you maybe have CFD values for wind speed or, um, or you know, very specific, you know, uh, activities that, you know, people are doing like walking or running or, or, or those types of things. Um, so, all right, so that concludes this video, and finally you guys are past the, the fundamental stage. And so now in this last one, we're really going to get, uh, get our hands dirty and, and dig into some design problems. See you there.